Thank you, sir. Ab absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and start my my share screen here. Um, and it's one of the reasons that I that I started photographing along the Chattahoochee River was to have a place to go and practice. And I'm going to start this from the beginning. Should start. There we go. Um, and and a place that I could go back to over and over and over again and get to know it, get to know its moods, get to know what the lights, the light was like at different times and different seasons. Um, and and so now my specialty obviously is nature and landscape photography and also wildlife, birds, dragonflies, um, to some extent flora, but mostly. Uh, mostly those other subjects. Uh, but if if you were to if you were to try to sum up my photography uh, over the last 20 years, and that's really when I've been doing it, I would say a river runs through it is the best way. And that to to sum it up, and that river is the Chattahoochee River. Um, it's where I've not only practiced my photography, but also I'm a strong believer that you know photography just done to make a pretty picture is is only half the only half the job. I I wanted my images to make a difference, and so I got involved really early on in conservation photography and using my photography to support organizations like. Chattahoochee River Keeper, Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, Chattahoochee Parks Conservancy, Waterkeeper Alliance, the Nature Conservancy, and others uh, that were making a difference and making an impact. And my photography helped in their, you know, in their mission. So I actually had goals uh, when I started photographing along the Chattahoochee, and I've been doing it now for 20 years. Um, actually, 21 now, I guess. Um, and, and these are the goals that I had. First of all, I wanted to have a place nearby that I could enjoy and photograph for a long time and that it would not run out of different opportunities. I mean, every time I go back down to the Chattahoochee, it's a different river. Heraclitus, I guess, was the Greek philosopher who said you cannot step in the same river twice. And that certainly is true of, 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 of any outdoor scene. I love to hear uh, nature photographers who say, well, I've already been to that you know waterfall or i've already been to that mountain to that location and i've i've got it you know i've captured it well as you know um the light is different every time um you know the the everything is different each time you go to a place so you really you really never go back to the same place uh, but you really get to know an area if you go back and back and back uh, i also wanted to capture the beauty of the of the river because i know a lot of people you know, it, most of us see the Chattahoochee River by driving over it at 60 miles an hour on one of the interstates. Well, if we're lucky, we're going 60 miles an hour um, over one of the over one of the bridges. And we just see this brown ribbon and we don't really see the beauty of it. And so I wanted to really uh, capture the beauty of it in photographs and and use those to illustrate why it was so important to to protect uh, that river. I wanted to show the wildlife that it supports. Um, this photograph that you see here is one of my favorites that I've done over the years. And it actually appears on all of the signs in the various parking locations of the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. Um, and it shows not only the river and beautiful uh, fall foliage, but also geese flying over, you know, to, to kind of show that it's a river of life, not just not just water flowing. Uh, down a ditch, but it's 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 really a uh, a, a living thing. Um, I wanted to show the diversity of life that it supports, um, and that is an ongoing uh, project because you know I'm always uh, capturing new things there and and uh, bringing those back. I try to show people connecting with nature. You know, it's really interesting. Y'all were talking about, you know, the Japan Fest, but it, in a lot of ways, conservation photography is also very much people photography. Um, I, I find that that the best conservation photography also uh, gets people in the in the scene. It shows people doing river cleanups or getting involved in fishing or canoeing or uh, rafting or whatever, um, and shows people connecting with nature. And I wanted to learn to do that better. Uh, inspire others to go there was a goal of mine, uh, because I've, I've always been one who believes that to be aware is to care. And so the more people you have viewing the river, the more uh, the, the easier it is to, uh, 
uh, to get them to care about it if it's threatened. Um, I wanted to inspire others to care about it, support organizations that protect it, uh, actually become an activist uh, for it uh, so that, that my photography actually had a mission. Um, I gain privileged access. Now, this is something that I always tell people about, um, you know, who are nature photographers, you know, work with, um, with a resource uh, manager of some sort. So, for example, I have a friend who walked into Davidson Arabia, um, uh, what's it, what do they call it, heritage area down in Lithonia. And he said, I'm a nature photographer and I'd love to do photography here and support you guys. Um, and they accepted uh, his offer. And then he started getting access to a lot of places and times that maybe he wouldn't have gotten access to without that support. So it, it really helps you to get access. And I've gotten access and information uh, and I would say on a privileged uh, basis because of my uh, involvement as a photographer on the river. Um, connect my photography into a unified whole so that my photography makes sense as a whole, not just individual pictures, um, but, a, but a whole uh, body of work uh, and develop an identity as a photographer. And there have been a number of jobs that I've gotten because I was uh, known as the Chattahoochee guy. And so that's something that I, you know, was always helpful. So I always recommend to photographers that they, especially nature photographers, but really, uh, really any kind of photography, that you claim an area as your own home turf, a place you love, a place that has diversity of subjects that can challenge you for years, subject matter that interests you, uh, easy for you to access so that you're going to, you're going to go. Uh, because if it's difficult for you to access, it's really easy to talk yourself out of going, you know, one time and then two times and then three times. Uh, a, a place that is in need of advocacy because it's threatened, a place uh, for which you can make a difference as a photographer, um, and then uh, make a, a contact with the agencies and organizations that protect it or form new ones. And a lot of photographers in the Atlanta area have formed conservation organizations. Um, uh, uh, Catherine Kolb is one example of, of a photographer who's done that. And, and this is the, um, this photograph here is the display at the headquarters building of the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area at Island Ford, um, the Hewlett uh, Visitor Center. And, and my photographs uh, were used I guess it was five years ago for a major installation that is still there, um, you know, to, talking about the river and giving information about the river. Um, I think they used 50 of my photographs, uh, you know, for that. And that, that, you know, not only was the photography that I'd done over the years that covered various different subjects, so it had a diversity of subjects, but also the contacts that I had made is, made is what, what got me that job. Um, and so uh, I, I'd say it's a really good way to approach it. Chattahoochee is an enormous watershed. It starts at Chattahoochee Gap in the North Georgia mountains, flows through Helen uh, down past Lake Lanier, uh, through the Atlanta area to the uh, Alabama border, down along the Alabama border, ultimately becomes the Apalachicola in Florida, flows into Apalachicola Bay, one of the uh, most uh, productive estuaries on the on the planet. Um, <clears throat> and it's a diverse river that makes its way from the North Georgia mountains to the Gulf of Mexico with thousands of tributaries and photographic opportunities, I might add, along the way. Um, up to the upper left, you see that's the uh, Chattahoochee River in, in Columbus. And that's a story in itself because the Eagle and Phoenix Dam that had blocked that the white water area of the Chattahoochee that goes through Columbus for a hundred years got blown up about a decade ago, and they developed this uh, white water uh, area through there. And now it's um, you know white water rafting in the in the middle of a of, of Columbus, Georgia. Um, and those not only are those shoals coming back, but um, they're now planting shoal spider lilies there, so that 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 is coming back. Um, the second photograph you see is at, up at the headwaters. That's Horse Trough Falls, uh, right near the headwaters of the Chattahoochee. 
Uh, you see one of its tributaries down there, the, the picture in the bottom left, that's the uh, Falls and Sweetwater Creek State Park. Um, there's the uh, a shrimp, uh, shrimp boat uh, in the uh, fishing boat, shrimp boat in the um, uh, in Apalachicola. And um, uh, over to the upper right, that's another shot of Columbus. And then below it is um, Flat Shoals Creek. And if y'all are taking notes, Make sure to check out um, newspaper articles and so forth in May of the year. Um, almost every May, the owner of that property in Flat Shoals Creek, where the Shoals spider lilies grow, um, actually opens up his property for people to come and, and see the spider lilies there. So he opens it up on weekends. His name is Mr. Johnson. Um, he has a lot of, he, he'll have hiking sticks there that you can pick up from leaning against the tree. He has a bunch of pairs of old tennis shoes that you can put on if you don't want to get your shoes, you know, wet when you're, when you're wading in the, in the stream. So he really makes it nice for people to visit there and see those uh, spider lilies. And it's usually uh, advertised in papers and so forth when he's opening, but it's usually the last weekends of May. So mid-May to the end of end of May. So the area of concentration for my photography and for this presentation has really been a very small part of that overall river that I just showed you. It's really from, I, I've focused my work from uh, in, in the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, though I've certainly photographed outside of that as well, but most of it has been from Island Ford uh, all the way down to Paces Mill in Cobb County. Island Ford is um, uh, up in uh, Roswell, and that's where the park headquarters is. And then uh, Paces Mill is off of uh, Cobb Parkway, uh, 41. So let's kind of go through that, and we're going to stop, start um, upriver. We're going to start at Island Ford, the park headquarters, go down to Don White uh, Memorial Park, uh, then Vickery Creek and so forth, Soap Creek and down at Gold Branch, and we'll go, we'll go uh, downriver. One thing that I do want to say is that um, if you have questions about a specific location, uh, please feel free to ask them at the end of the presentation. I also don't mind being interrupted, but make sure to ask the question because the thing that I'm trying to do with this presentation is not necessarily to teach uh, photography. Technique. It's more to inform people about opportunities that are available so that they can then go and 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 photograph in those places. So starting with Island Ford, that's where the visitor center is for uh, Island Ford Parkway headquarters for uh, Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. An easy walk down a, a very uh, easy to uh, navigate trail. In fact, most of it is paved. Uh, down to the river and a good trail that goes uh, down river from the headquarters building. It's a really, really pretty location, as I think you can see in this um, uh, in this photograph. One of the things that I do, and I think I may not have put that slide back in this image, but if you go to the U.S. Geological Survey and you look up the monitoring, the water monitoring stations. So it's called the uh, USGS um, site, Chattahoochee River. Uh, I usually have it on below Morgan Falls Dam, and it actually gives you the flow rates of the river at any given time. And so you can look at the flow rates of the river. Um, and I typically have the best luck with low flow rates. Usually the water is clearer, so the water quality is nicer. This is very low flow rate um, at uh, uh, Island Ford. I would imagine that the flow rate there is probably about uh, maybe 900 uh, cubic feet per second. Um, and so, you know, and sometimes at the higher flow rates, it's above, you know, four and 5,000 cubic feet per second. And typically it's carrying a lot more sediment um, at those high flow rates and, and so forth. So one of the things that I usually try to check out and I keep it on my, um, up on my computer where I can just click on it is that USGS 
uh, survey uh, flow rates chart. And there's locations all over the state for different rivers where you can look at those flow rates. There's also a pond and a creek at Island Ford. Um, it's on the drive from the entrance uh, almost uh, to the visitor center, and it's off to the right, though the parking area is off to the left. And that pond and creek during the summertime is a really good location for all sorts of things, uh, you know, everything from turtles, uh, kingfishers, uh, dragonflies, birds, et cetera. It's a great location for that. Good, good to just hang out with your camera and see what, see what you see. Um, it's one of three great locations for dragonflies and damselflies uh, along the Chattahoochee River. And those three, I think the best locations for them along the Chattahoochee are one, the pond at Island Ford Parkway, they're at the headquarters. Number two, Sibley Pond, which is located at Soap Creek. So it's right off of um, Paper Mill. Uh, so you turn into the parking lot for Soap Creek and you just walk down the, the wide trail there. And the pond is within probably 50 yards, maybe 75 at the most of the parking area. And it's a great location for uh, dragonflies. And then the other location that I, I really like for dragonflies is the Johnson Ferry North uh, entrance to, uh, uh, to the Chattahoochee. And that entrance is accessed um, as you go uh, Johnson Ferry Road, just as you're about to cross the river. Uh, but before you do so, you turn, if you're coming from Cobb County, you're gonna turn left or north into the parking lot there. And you simply walk along the uh, the trail, uh, actually kind of get off trail and walk along that power line cut. And if you walk along that power line cut, there's often in the summertime, some really good dragonflies. That dragonfly to the upper right, which is a blue-faced meadowhawk, was photographed there probably in September. It may have been late August, but I think it was September. And the one uh, that, the blue one there that has kind of the, the white uh, split stigma. So that up at the upper uh, left of that, you see the split stigma that has a white and black. Um, and that's a, a um, spangled skimmer. And that was also photographed there. So a really good, really good dragonfly to get. And then, uh, so that's that's the three, my three favorite locations for dragonflies. So certainly they're all up and down the river. But kind of back to the island for one of the nice things about it is a, a little creek that comes down from that pond and flows into the Chattahoochee River there and has a really nice little waterfall. And I swear you can go back to that thing over and over and over again and have a, a nice picture, uh, but different uh, every time you go. There's right over that little waterfall, there's a big um, mountain laurel. And especially when that mountain laurel is blooming and the petals uh, the flowers are all over the, the waterfall. The rocks on the waterfall can make for some stunning images. And then this is the trail there that goes downriver from uh, the visitor center. So you get really good access and visibility out into the water. And if you, if you like to photograph birds, you get lots of opportunities there for great blue herons, um, lots of opportunities for uh, waterfowl, uh, Oftentimes I hear kingfishers and see kingfishers in that area. So it's a great place. Further on down the river, right under uh, Georgia 400 uh, Bridge is the Don White Memorial Park. Um, and that uh, is a great little place. It's got its own little parking area there under the bridge uh, where you can actually walk out uh, and, and get a really good view looking upriver and also a good view looking downriver. One of the ways that I discovered it was when I was photographing the uh, Chattahoochee River race, the Back to the Chat race, it was one of the best places for me to go to see the leaders coming down the river uh, and photograph them as they were paddling down the river. So it, it, it's really good for, you know, if you want to shoot paddlers there, if you want to shoot fall foliage there, um, can be, be a really good location. And it's really easy to access. If the parking area isn't full, I mean, you basically get out of your car and set up your tripod and start taking pictures. It's, you know, there's, the walking is absolutely minimal. 
Okay, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Um, Y'all are probably familiar with this location. This is uh, Roswell Mill, Vickery Creek. Now, how I've accessed this is actually not through the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, but I've gone in through the old Roswell Mill, and there's a trail that goes down along that um, along the river and comes right up to the uh, to the waterfall and there at the mill. Uh, the other side of this, what, so what you're looking at, the other side, the other bank of the river there, or the, the creek, uh, is actually Chattahoochee, you know, it's the National Park. Uh, but what I'm standing in right there when I'm taking the picture is actually a Roswell Park. Um, and then it's just, every time you go back, you know, the light's different, something's different. In this in this instance, you know, there was just a really nice opportunity to get a, you know, stop down to I believe, you know, either F16 or I'd stop down pretty well so that I could get a nice little sun star there, and you could get those crepuscular rays and the the, the you know the sunlight on the fog. So I mean, there's just always different opportunities there. Uh, Allen Brook is is on the other side. Um, it's actually at the entrance to Allen Brook is as you are going north on Roswell Road, right after you cross over uh, the intersection with Azalea Drive and you're starting to go up the hill into the Roswell area, um, it's on the right. And there's a lot of, hit, uh, of bluffs there that can set up some really nice opportunities for, for photographs and photography. The Riverside Park and Boardwalk is just lots of great opportunities for whatever you like to photograph. If you like to photograph, you know, people doing activities on the water like that uh, rower there. And we actually used this, I think in 2005, this went um, on one of the ads that the river did uh, that they put in all the Cobb County bus stop locations. They, they put posters there at the bus stop. Um, and, and so you can get a lot of opportunities like that. The second picture is down further down river on Willio at Willio Park. Um, you know, you see uh, rowers in there all the time. Um, and and now that they've built the boardwalk, it really gives great access because what used to be really difficult in that area was you could walk along the roadside and you could kind of see the river out there, but you really didn't get good access to it with your with your camera. And now, as you know, with this boardwalk, I mean, you're right there on the river. So you're seeing everything that's going on on the river and you get great access to it. Um, it's a great place for, uh, for birds because um, a lot of it goes through the, the wooded area. So this was just, I think, in one walk uh, down there, everything from a red-shouldered hawk to red-bellied woodpecker, bluebird, great blue heron, et cetera. And this is a photograph from, of a, you know, one uh, pretty morning there along the Roswell boardwalk, uh, you know, and the sky just went on fire and I took a picture of it. And this is down at Willie O Park, um, which is where the boardwalk, where you can begin your access uh, on the boardwalk. And basically you're walking up river from, from this access point. This was one morning walk along the boardwalk. So in one morning, at the bald eagles that nest down there at, um, there's actually a nest at Morgan Falls Dam, um, and it's been active for a number of years. And I was lucky enough this year to get a lot of sightings of, of the birds, of the bald eagles from that nest. And one morning I was walking along the boardwalk and, um, you know, the, um, the male, I believe it is, graced me with a flyover. Uh, several flyovers actually, and you know, I was ten frames a second. Got a, got a lot of shots, um, and then of course um, to the upper right, you see that's a um, northern rough wing swallow and a yellow rump warbler there down below and in the center, and a couple of folks rowing. And it was really interesting that morning because I took the picture and I was taking it with a long telephoto lens, and the ladies started yelling at me. I thought, uh oh, I'm in trouble, and they said. And it, I realized that they were telling me their names so that I could connect with them on Facebook and give them the picture. And so now the lady that's in the boat uh, on the bottom, and I can't remember her name at this point, but uh, that's her that's her Facebook picture right now. She's She's got that on there. So 
it's uh, really, really interesting what you can do there. Further uh, downriver, there's another access point uh, called Gold Branch. Um, and uh, by the way, you, you need a pass to park uh, at any of these, um, in any of these national park parking areas. Um, you can either get a, a, a buy a pass from them specifically for the, the uh, Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area, which I provided them photographs for, for the last gosh, 20 years. Um, or you can get your, you know, your uh, national park passes, your senior passes, all of those uh, that apply to national park locations apply. But Gold Branch is one of those really nice parking areas, and it can take you to um, some nice places just above Bull Sluice Lake, which is the lake that's right above um, the uh, Morgan Falls Dam. And just some scenes from there. So now as we work our way down the river, we're going to look at places like Johnson Ferry North, Johnson Ferry South, then further on down Cochrane Shoals and Soap Creek and the Palisade. So starting with Johnson Ferry, this is the view at the boat uh, boat launching area at Johnson Ferry North. So it can be quite pretty in the fall. And as I mentioned earlier, that dragonfly of the, the, the photograph of the blue-faced metahawk was actually uh, photographed there at Johnson Ferry North. Great location for birds as well as dragonflies. Um, this uh, spring during the migration, I was able to get hooded warblers there, uh, blue grosbeak, um, rose-breasted grosbeak, uh, you know, all sorts of good, uh, good um, migration birds there. At Johnson Ferry South, there's actually an active uh, beaver lodge there. Uh, I, I've not been able to get the beavers yet, but I've, I've seen a lot of uh, their activity, um, but have not uh, gotten them yet, but I'll get them. Uh, so also a great area to photograph woodpeckers where I took this photograph of, or this photograph of the Beaver Lodge is actually, I'm standing in virtually the same location as all of these species of woodpeckers. So there's a hairy woodpecker to the left, a pileated and a redhead and a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Um, also that same location is great uh, to photograph birds um, you see a cedar waxwing hawking for mosquitoes and other in flying insects there, and uh, just a good location for there. Soap Creek, uh, right off of Paper Mill Road, beautiful uh, creek that flows through there. Um, you've got the opportunity to photograph the old ruins there of the mill, um, you know, and then further down the creek, especially in the fall. Some, I mean, it's just a wonderful place to wander and and make fall photographs. And and this is just you know blurred uh, fall colors in the in the running water uh, that I thought made a nice nice little scene. This is the pond that I was telling you about. That's at Soap Creek. This is Sibley Pond. Um, there's a little trail that runs all the way around Sibley Pond, um, and it's you know as the seasons change. Uh, it's just a lovely spot for for uh, photographs, including you know winter. You get a nice little snow, and the roads are clear. That's a good place to head for some nice uh, courier and knives kind of scenes. A uh, good place for dragonflies. This is actually a really difficult dragonfly to get. I've never seen one perched. This is a male comet darner um, that I was able to. I, I actually saw four on the pond on the same day. Uh, pretty amazing, actually. Uh, so it's a really good location if you're, you know, a nerdy dragonfly photographer like I am. Um, further on down, Cochrane Shoals really is accessed by two parking areas. There's the Interstate North uh, Parkway uh, access area, which is um, on the downriver side of, of Cochrane Shoals. And then on the upper uh, side is the uh, Pelham's Drive. Uh, parking area and both of those access that area. And there's a lot of, of um, activity there. There's runners, there's bikers. That's one of the places where, you know, uh, mountain biking can be done. And they actually have volunteers who are mountain biking uh, folks who kind of patrol the area. A uh, lot of fishing going on there. A lot of, lot of uh, trout fishermen 
Uh, this this is one of the photos that the park purchased from me and when when they were doing that big project in their headquarters building. And and you get a you get to see a lot of them catching. There's a lot of trout in there, and you not only get to see a lot of fishing, you get to see a lot of catching, uh, which is which is always good. There's a beaver pond that can be accessed from there. Uh, the the way that I go into it is to park at Johnson Ferry North and then to walk along the hiking, biking, jogging path uh, that that's really a gravel road more than anything else um, that goes uh, up river and the beaver pond is off to the left and of course you get a lot of a lot of uh, that's great habitat so you know everything from that hooded merganser down at the bottom to the northern pintail duck that's up there at the top and you've got a little ice skating sparrow there um, this is the boardwalk uh, one winter, uh, just a scene with uh, the Canada, the ubiquitous Canada geese, I should say, uh, there along the right side. Another close up of that hoodie. I love hooded mergansers. This is a male, of course. Um, so that, now we're going to go a little further down the river to the Palisades, which, in my opinion, you know, and, and Palisades are, are very close to. Um, you know where the where the intersection of 285 and 75 is and yet you can walk down in there and think you're in a wilderness area it's just so beautiful so this is walking in from this is palisades west so this is accessing the river from the acres mill parking area coming down the short trail to the river we're looking up river here those rocks are all a part of the of the uh, shoal area that's known as the Devil's Race Course, um, and this is actually standing almost in front of the bathroom. So there's actually a bathroom facility down on the river uh, there that's serviced by a road that you can kind of hardly see. That you know only the Forest Service, I mean the uh, Park Service, actually has access to, but it's it's. Uh, you know, so here you are in this beautiful location and it's kind of down in, so you're not hearing, you know, the interstate noises anymore and you're just seeing a lot of really pretty stuff. And it's a place that if you go to only one location on the river, this is the one that I would recommend that you go to. This is looking across the river, across uh, Devil's Race Course. I'm actually, my camera position in this shot is actually upriver from the one uh, that was just before that. This is uh, Palisades in May. So this is looking right across the river at all the mountain laurel. I think this was taken on May 4th, 2007, if I remember right. This hung in the, the headquarters for a number of years and enlargement of that. These are the, uh, the bluffs that are over there on Palisades uh, East, looking from the Palisades West side. Um, and especially in the fall, that can be really, really beautiful. Um, you know, and this is this is as pretty as any place. Not not just this isn't just pretty for a place that's two miles from a baseball stadium. This is pretty for anywhere, and so I I highly recommend it. Um, you know, this is looking downriver. The shoals that are below Palisades are called Thornton Shoals, so that um, that's what you're looking down at. This is actually looking at the uh, rocks, um, rocks and fog, looking down Thornton Shoals from the um, uh, Palisades West, the west side of the river. Um, in February, uh, and I'm going to give you another location too where you can see these, the trout lilies absolutely grow in profusion down there. Um, this is one of the best places to see them. You come down to Acres Mill uh, from the Acres Mill parking lot, and then you walk down river about as far as you can walk until you start walking up uh, the kind of the cliffs. Now, at a certain point, the trail becomes impassable and don't go any farther. But before that happens on those cliffs, you just start seeing a, a million of these uh, trout lilies. And one of the reasons that I like this particular location, though you can also see trout lilies on the Bob Callan Trail um, uh, that's uh, accessed from Pace's Middle, this is one of the locations where you can get some nice shots of the trout lilies as well as the river in the background. This is just a, a interior forest shot in the spring where you get everything from redbud to, to um, dogwoods and, and other colorful spring leaves. And of course, same opportunities, uh, but in the fall. 
um, you know, just uh, one night just playing around and, and open the shutter for a long time and letting the letting the trails of the of the uh, uh, lightning bugs, you know, streak across the uh, across the lens. This is actually uh, the other side of the river in essentially the same location. So what I'm doing right here is looking across um, Devil's Race Course at where my camera position was for some of those other shots that you saw before. And this is a great place in the morning because in the morning you can get it where you know the sun is behind you and it's lighting up the other bank. And so especially in the fall, this is a really nice location to get not only the fall foliage on the other side of the river, but also the reflections and the rocks in the water and everything. So it's really, really nice. One of the things that I uh, do is I shoot a lot of wide angle macro. So I use two lenses for this. I use a Sigma 15 millimeter fisheye lens that has a really good up, uh, uh, close up capability. And I also use a Lawa 15 millimeter one to one uh, macro lens that actually is a 15 millimeter lens that will go one to one macro for the reproduction ratio. Um, and I like to shoot this way because so I not only can see, and by the way, that it's the uh, PowerPoint that cut the top of that off. I didn't cut that off in the photograph, but um, that's a Soport Gentian. And so this. Um, this actually lets you see not only the flower itself, but also it lets you see all the contacts. It lets you see when it blooms, it blooms in the fall, lets you see where it blooms right on the side of the river. And that's why I like using wide angle macro. This is further down river. This access point is Whitewater Creek. Uh, so you can go park in the Whitewater Creek area. The only negative to this particular access point is, is that it is absolutely overrun with people walking dogs without having them on leashes. And um, there's a number of times that I've been a little bit frightened by uh, a dog that, you know, the owner swore was friendly, um, but wasn't necessarily. And this is looking up river uh, from that area. Um, this is, uh, let's see, let me move this a little bit. This is Pace's Mill. So you see where Pace's Mill is. It's uh, j just down from 75. So then you enter off of 41 and you see that white line along the, the uh, river there on the uh, northwest, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, northwest side of the river, northwest river bank. That trail uh, starts from the parking area and goes along the river. Now, the minute that you leave that little green area that where it says Vinings Riverview, start looking if you go early in the spring, like February and March, start looking uh, uh, into the woods there as you start your walk and you'll see all sorts of great spring ephemeral flowers. Uh, one of the things that that's great for is bloodroot. So you get a lot of opportunities there to photograph bloodroot as you then kind of pass that green area and start in down that trail on the right in the spring, you'll see it's just absolutely loaded with may apple. And so you get a lot of really good opportunity there. Then as you go under 75, you'll notice that that trail breaks to the left um, and goes along with the north, you know, north on 75. That's where you see the trout lilies in February. And that whole right hand side of that trail can just absolutely get covered with trout lilies. This is shooting from the boat ramp at uh, 41 uh, at, at uh, Paces Mill uh, there. This is just a shot from that same camera position on the same day, believe it or not. Just I just noticed this little a uh, wave being created by the water running over those leaves that were caught on some rocks. Paces Mill uh, for late winter, early spring flowers is just awesome. You know, everything from there's the the uh, blood root is the one at the bottom, the white flower to the right. Uh, those um, trout lilies were actually photographed along the Bob Callan Trail. That's the one that I told you when you go north along 75 or you parallel uh, north 75. And then you see the wood sorrel there that was also photographed there, but that was a little later in the season. And that, that trail that goes along North 75, that's Rottenwood Creek. 
that goes along Rottenwood Creek, and that's where a lot of those um, those uh, uh, plants are. So let's kind of we've kind of gone geographically. Let's talk about some favorite subjects of mine there along the river. So uh, first of all, just photographing the flow of the river. I think there's endless opportunity for nice abstract uh, images there. Um, that image to the lower left was actually used by the designer of the display uh, that got put up in the um, in the headquarters building as kind of the backdrop uh, for the rest of the images to rest or float on top of, which I thought was a real creative uh, use of that. Um, I love to photograph people in the park and you get lots of opportunities. This was on the cover of a brochure. Uh, the guy that's in that gray kayak contacted me and asked me for a copy of this to get for he and his buddy to both have. And of course I sent it to him. Um, so boating and fishing are, are great activities to photograph. Um, boating uh, particularly, and, and you see all sorts. Now, usually most of the, um, uh, most of what you'll see and for the for the folks that are using rowing shells that's almost all above morgan falls dam i don't know if i've ever seen a rowing shell below that and then below morgan falls dam uh, that's where you see kayaks and canoes and rafts and so forth um, this was uh, taken at uh, below morgan falls dam way below uh, just wanted to show that great blue hair and watching those kayakers, making sure they didn't get into any trouble. Um, this guy is walking across the rocks there on Devil's Race Course. Notice how he's got that pole for safety. Please keep that in mind as you're walking along that area because you can really fall on those rocks. And it's often tempting to, you know, to walk into the water, which I do a lot with your tripod and so forth. And I just encourage you to be safe and cautious when you do that. Uh, just uh, caught a hiker on a snowy day at Cochrane Shoals. Um, they wanted a hiker in the in the uh, uh, for one of the annual passes. I think this was the 2020 annual passes annual pass, and this was shot at Gold Branch. And I just set up the tripod, and that's me. Uh, you can see that's a low pro uh, camera backpack, but they liked it a lot, and they put it on the cover of the of the park pass. Uh, flora of the park is a great, uh, great opportunities there for for uh, for flora. Uh, wild if you're a wildflower enthusiast, uh, it it's heaven. Both of those were images there were shot with Sigma 15 millimeter fisheye lens on a crop sensor body. One of the reasons that I do it that way is that a crop sensor body, most of the barrel distortion that's caused by that fisheye lens is actually off of the edges, it's kind of cropped out by that crop sensor body. And so you really don't have a lot of work to do to get rid of that distortion if you want to. Uh, and you don't even necessarily have to get rid of the distortion. Um, the one on the left of the Soapwort Gentian, I, I did not uh, correct for that barrel distortion in, in Photoshop. And you know, so there's other uh, wildflowers there as well. I like to do a lot of wide angle stuff. This is also shot with a wide angle lens. This is shot with the Sigma 15 millimeter fisheye, uh, kind of getting down below the, uh, you know, cause it's hard to get those flowers of the, uh, uh, of the May apple. You have to get, you know, down below uh, to see it. And that's a really good way to do that with that wide angle approach. And of course there's, um, you know, full of native azalea in the spring all through the park. Uh, you know, mushrooms, fruiting bodies of, of, of mushrooms, ferns. And, you know, I've seen lots of different species of ferns, everything from cinnamon ferns to uh, Christmas ferns. It's just, uh, you know, if you like to photograph that. I also make sure to photograph alien invasive species because these are the types of photographs that can often be used. Uh, in conservation photography to, to show some of the, um, you know, some of where you, you have, well, the picture to the left is Chinese privet and it's actually, you know, it's completely taken over that area. Jerry Hightower, who's one of the rangers on the river, who's been there since the park was dedicated in 1978, said that there's a lot of areas uh, where the Chinese privet has so choked out the area that wildflowers that used to grow there haven't grown there in years. So it, it really is an, an issue and it's good to photograph it. 
uh, dragonflies, butterflies, that sort of thing. I like to photograph those there, and those pictures have been used. This photograph was used. This is um, uh, obviously a cedar waxwing uh, eating um, uh, mistletoe berries, and it was actually used in a couple of PowerPoint presentations um, from a, an ornithologist who wanted to show, you know, uh, food sources for birds. Uh, you know, lots of birds on the water. I really liked that opportunity of, I could not believe what I was seeing with that kingfisher to the right, uh, who had just caught that crayfish, landed on a rock, uh, let me get a really low camera angle, uh, proceeded to beat that, uh, that uh, crayfish senseless on the rock. I've got about a thousand pictures of it. Um, and this was one of my favorites. Um, and and uh, spotted sandpipers, all sorts of good work birds on the on the water. Uh oh, let's see somehow. There we go. Um, you know, wood ducks. So the area where I showed you Johnson Ferry South, uh, Johnson Ferry South, where that um, uh, Beaver Lodge was, that's a really good location for wood ducks and. I don't care what kind of photographer you are, food photographer, portrait photographer, nobody doesn't want to shoot a wood duck. I mean, wood ducks are just beautiful birds to photograph. A lot of the local species, uh, these were all just shot from one location one morning where I was there to shoot something else, you know, so you got everything from winter wrens to uh, to white-throated sparrow to uh, the state bird, which is a brown thrasher, a male. Um, Eastern Toey, uh, so lots of good stuff. Spring migration, everything from scarlet tanager, hooded warbler, red-eyed vireo, palm warbler, um, you know, that, that you'll see coming through. Herons, uh, great place to photograph great blue herons. And of course, they're such, such interesting subjects. I mean, you always get them catching and fishing and flying and, you know, they're just they're just fantastic subjects. And then often if you can find a rookery, this rookery is no more, but I staked it out for about three years and got, you know, pictures of the stick swap that they do and, and pictures of their offspring and, and so forth, you know, just by staking out the same location there at Cochrane Shoals. Um, you know, this was them on a snow day. Belted kingfishers all up and down the river. Um, you know, and of course, they always give themselves away with that rattle uh, that they do. Hawks and owls, the rivers, uh, uh, especially that boardwalk that I told you about that's up in Roswell is always a great location for them. And also, um, this this happened up there at Willie O Park one day. This, um, this red-tailed hawk was in there hunting, and sure enough, what he came up with was a crawfish. And he flew to a branch right above me and proceeded to eat that crawfish. I must have done something right that week uh, that I was being rewarded for. Uh, bald eagles there at Morgan Falls, and oftentimes they're flying uh, over the river. Um, and uh, that's that's the nest looking from the, uh, the dog park uh, down there just below uh, Morgan Falls uh, Dam. And that eagle is bringing back a stick uh, to uh, put in the nest. This is not from Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. This is an osprey. Uh, this was actually shot down in Florida, but it's just kind of a placeholder. I've seen them there, and I just don't have photographs that uh, that I'm that I don't have as good a photograph as I'm going to get one day of ospreys fishing. Believe it or not, North American river otters um, catching crayfish within sight of the I-75 bridge, within about a mile and a half of where the Braves play baseball. Um, and I, I saw them on seven different occasions uh, last fall and winter. Um, at one time, I saw four of them in the water at the same time. I thought this guy was pretty handsome. Um, and this uh, one to the left swam right up to figure out what the heck I was, probably trying to figure out if I was edible. Um, and, and so, so just kind of to finish up, you know, just kind of how you can get involved. Well, you know, there's a, a sweep the hooch every year um, and uh, the uh, GMPA, Georgia Nature Photographers Association, always volunteers to help photograph sweep the hooch. And if you ever wanted to volunteer for that and were a member of GMPA, you'd be welcome to do that. Um, 
I, I work with organizations that protect the river and provide them with photographs. Um, we did a couple of MARTA buses a couple of years in a row and, and provided the photographs for those bus wraps. Um, this was that um, campaign that I was telling you about that was a healthy parks, healthy living campaign that was, um, I think it was uh, what's the Unilever that has te uh, uh, lift and T. Uh, they were the ones that were the sponsors of that particular uh, of that particular campaign, and that, I thought it, uh, from what I understand, it was very successful. Uh, they all, you know, all organizations need display and educational, um, you know, material. Um, you know, the the uh, the different organizations that work on the river. Uh, all have websites and they need to, you know, they have collateral material that they need to provide. Uh, these are where they've used my photographs at the entrance uh, for the entry signs and the wayfaring signs along the river. Uh, and that's always a help to them. Uh, they need the images for brochures and websites and other collateral material. And you can apply this to really any organization that you might work with that is protecting an area or is the resource manager. Uh, of an area, you know, I've provided the annual passes for them and, and, uh, you know, just this kind of thing helps the river. One of the things too, that I tell people that do, um, conservation photography is, is that event photography is really a skill that you need to develop if you're going to do conservation work, because a lot of organizations do fundraising events or events that, you know, you know, or are, are just fun events. And and they need photography uh, for that to show people interacting with the river. Um, this is uh, just some of the photos that we did for Sweep the Hooch. Um, a, a great, you know, they get north of 20 tons of garbage out of the river uh, every year with Sweep the Hooch. And they get uh, over a thousand volunteers working on the river on one day on a massive cleanup each year. So it's a great thing to participate in. Uh, another organization that I like to support is essentially the friends group of the Chattahoochee River NRA, and it's called the Chattahoochee National Parks Conservancy, and I provide them with a lot of photos that they that they need. So um, thus endeth the uh, presentation. I, I hope that that was helpful, and I am open to questions. I'm going to stop sharing. There we go.